You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce di Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei il volto de l'amour. You are a You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God 
You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei il volto dell'amore. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of you are God. the face of love. I hold you in my heart. Good morning, and welcome to Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. Let us join together in singing <coughs> Surely the Presence. can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence 
of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. The prophet Isaiah assures us, you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Dear God, we turn to you and invoke your presence and power to open our hearts and minds to those experiences and insights and spiritual tools leading us ever closer to you. Guide us that we might come alive by practicing your universal principles and following your path of eternal good. And so it is. Amen. Love him, I love him, I love him. And where God goes, I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow. I will follow him. Follow him wherever he may go. There isn't an ocean too deep, a mountain so high it can keep, keep me away. I must follow him. Ever since he touched my heart, I knew that near God I always must be. And nothing can keep him from me. God is my destiny. I love him, I love him, I love him. And where God goes, I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow. He'll always be my true love, my true love, my true love. From now on to forever, 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 I will follow him. Follow him wherever he may go. There isn't an ocean too deep, a mountain so high it can keep, keep me away, away from my God. I love him, I love him, I love him, and where he goes I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow. God always is my true love, my true love, my true love, from now into forever, forever, forever. I will follow him, follow him wherever he may go. There isn't an ocean too deep, a mountain so high it can keep, keep me away, away from my God, away from my God. Slowly, let the world retreat from you and let this be your special time of peace, of prayer, and meditation. With each breath, I become more aware of your presence in me, as me. And I thank you, God. I thank you for your loving presence in my life and my growing awareness of the ways that I experience you in the beauty of the morning sunrise, a gentle breeze, the warmth of the sun on my face. I hear you in the laughter of children, music, the voices around me, your very breath of life in me. There is nowhere, my beloved, that you are not. As I continue to grow into that person you created me to be, I ask you this, that I may come each day to know you more. Let my faith be deepened so that I no longer doubt and question, but that I immediately turn to you and know that all is well and all things truly work together for my good, my growth. May my power of divine imagination be quickened in me so that I can create in my mind the glorious light that you have planned for me, that I can see beyond my limited thinking to new vistas. I have not lived my best day, my finest hour. 
I am but an infant in imagining the great good that you have in store for me. I release all doubt and fear, unrealistic expectations. Turn loose any old voices in me that say I can't, I don't deserve. I'm too young, too old, too poor, too anything. I am your child, your perfect child right now. And so I create in my mind a new picture of perfect health, harmonious relationships, self-acceptance, success of loving kindness toward myself and all others. In my new awareness, I am a child of endless possibility. And I know, I truly know that your will for me is good. And I live from that conviction. Jesus said to go within and close the door. And so I do. I go within to that place of inner peace and knowing. Rest in the heart space of your loving comfort. And I do this in the silence, in the silence. As I prepare my attention back to this room, I leave behind any cares, concerns for myself or my loved ones. I know that you, God, are taking care of them too. I take with me a renewed strength, aliveness, and willingness to do your will in my life. And I ask that you use me, God. I now consciously choose to be a channel for your love and goodness in this world. Let my heart burst forth with a radical love that nurtures, heals, lifts, and inspires my brothers and sisters on this path that we have chosen to walk together. Show me, Lord, how to be more than I have ever been before. And never let me forget to be grateful, even for, especially for, the little things in my life. For in the end, that is what life is made up of, the little things. And then, when my days are over, I can know that I had a part in creating a little piece of heaven right here on earth. For this, for every blessing, I say thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And now, let us join together as we sing and pray the Lord's Prayer. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory
you mad. Other things just make you swear and curse. When you're chewing on life's gristle, don't grumble, give a whistle. And this'll help things turn out for the best. And always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. And that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing. When you're feeling in the dumps, don't be silly chumps. Just purse your lips and whistle, that's the thing. And always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. For life is quite absurd and death's the final word. You must always face the curtain with a bow. Forget about your sin and give the audience a grin. Enjoy it, it's your last chance anyhow. And always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. For life is quite absurd and death's the final word. You must always face the curtain with a bow. Forget about your sin and give the audience a grin. Give the audience the grin they love and always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. Side of life, side of life, side of life. Oh, Nancy, that is such beautiful singing. We are so grateful. Thank you. I'm inviting you on a journey today, on a path of radical acceptance. And I encourage you to trust the process and to follow along this path. Rita Walker, a mental health professional, describes the ABC of the radical acceptance process. A, assume you can make a difference. B, be a good listener. And C, cancel all judgment in otherwise in other words be open and receptive to all possibilities you have reason to rejoice and in these next 20 minutes we will share some of these reasons as well as the basis for believing in them for example you have reason to rejoice just knowing that God is with you, no matter what, lifting you, helping you to overcome any burden or obstacle. And another, you can awaken to the awareness that God within you is allowing you to be the true you someone who is worthy of being lovable and being lovable not only to others but to yourself another reason to rejoice this time of bitter disagreement in our country is revealing concrete issues that provide seeds for conflict resolution and will lead to real possibility for social justice and economic equality. A further reason to rejoice. You can choose to embrace the truth that our nation is moving toward a multicultural society where the benefits 
are so vast that they greatly outweigh any risks. Finally, a reason to rejoice is that the world, like our individual consciousness, is so alive that opportunity is vast and unlimited. And all of this causes us to marvel at how life itself comes alive in such amazing ways. We need only look around us at nature renewing itself with signs of spring everywhere. And we can be grateful that God provides us so many reasons to laugh. Let me give you a couple of examples. Here at Fox Run, where we live, there is a man who loves to put on his blue and gold sweatshirt. Now, the University of Michigan fans love to see that, but then he turns around and on the back it says MSU. Well, that completely confuses the Michigan State supporters as well because their colors are green and white, not maize and blue. Well, you see this man has his alma mater as Montana State University. MSU, and those are the colors of Montana State University. It, it throws us all off. And this same man, whose name is Dean, is in a wheelchair and he tools up and down the roadway, going as fast as can be. But being in that wheelchair does not hold him down a bit. I was in the pool the other day, he and I were the only ones in it, and he was swimming laps. And it was clear that he was a competitive swimmer at one time, which is true. He is. And it turns out that his legs are able to provide this great kick. It's only his knees that are weak and require him to be in the wheelchair. To add another dimension to this contrast that I find within this man. He's always smiling, outgoing, happy with people. And yet for 30 years, he was a top executive, a high official within the National Intelligence Agency, which is our nation's greatest secret keeper of national intelligence, more so even than the CIA. Well, each of the many reasons that we have to rejoice and far beyond what I've mentioned comes vividly into our awareness. Once we embrace the five core beliefs that form the basis for our unity teachings. And as I share these with you, I invite you to receive them, not just intellectually, but in your heart so that it is able to take over your life. And as I share these with you, know that you don't have to be writing them down because if you're on the mailing list, you will be receiving shortly after the service, the points to remember, which will include each of these. Well, the first core belief of unity is God is the one presence and one power everywhere active in the universe and in my life. Well, if there's one presence and one power, there cannot be another. And this alone sets unity apart from most other spiritual teachings. You see, I saw some time ago that two thirds of our country, the per two thirds of the persons in the United States continue to believe that there is a devil or Satan entity at work in the world. Sometimes it's called the enemy or the adversary. But this can't be in unity teachings because if that were so, we could not talk about God Almighty, we'd have to say God part mighty. 
because God will be competing with a devil force for the good in the world. And the truth is, you can't have it both ways. There is no devil. No devil force. No principle of evil exists. Only a principle of good, of absolute good. Well, I hear someone saying, well, did not the Bible talk about the devil leading Jesus into all kinds of temptation? Well, if you read carefully, you'll see that it, this is metaphysically devil thoughts that were trying to take over Jesus, and he did not. He resisted them, rejected them at every turn. Absolute good is being showered upon each one of us at every turn. Well, the question becomes, well, how did it come about then that so many people believe in a devil or Satan force? And the reason is that about 500 years before the life of Jesus, there was something that was called the exile, where the Babylonian people entered Israel and overtook it, defeated it in battle and took away a number of the more intelligent people within Israel and took them away for a term of 70 years into Babylon, where they were subjected to the spiritual teaching of Zoroastrianism, which includes a teaching that there is a devil force. There's a good force and a an anti-good force going on at all times. And the Israelites said, well, if we've gotten ourselves into this mess, it must make sense, this devil force. This went on, even though there had been only the teaching of a single deity, starting with Abraham and through Moses and King David for 1,500 years, this single deity was taught. But then with the exile, it all changed. And this has gone on since that time. Even though Jesus taught there is only God, there is no other power but God. God is all power, all knowledge, and everywhere present is what we teach in unity. Recently, I heard an interview of a, of a, uh, physicist, a nuclear physicist who was asked in the interview, do you believe in God? And he said, I believe in God and that God is responsible for an alternative universe. Well, I thought to myself, well, I can accept that, that unit, alternative universe being the divine realm, as we call it, except it's not limited to this divine realm. God is all power everywhere. Now, someone will, may well say, well, and I've heard it said, if God is all power, why do we have such issues here in the world? And the reason is that God gives human beings free will, free reign to create their lives and the life around them as they will, so that this could be a learning tool by which their consciousness can grow. You see, if God just imposed good everywhere, there would be no basis for people to lift their consciousness. They would already be there. Well, God gives us that freedom. Have you heard the story about the, the man who passed on and when he saw God, he said, God, is it true that with you, one second is the same as a thousand years? And God said, yes, that's pretty much it. And the man said, well, would you be willing to change everything on the earth so that all good reigns at all times? And God said, sure, yes, but give me a second. Well, the second core belief, 
since our essence is of God, we are inherently divine. The truth is, as the Genesis in first chapter of Genesis states, you are made in the image and after the likeness of God. So God must be present in you and in me. And this is that true you that we were talking about. As the Apostle Paul said, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, Christ in you, your hope of glory. There's a wonderful analogy that I love. It seems three quarters of a century ago, in the middle of the last century, in uh, Thailand, in Bangkok, the capital, there was this beautiful temple. And it had a wonderful clay Buddha in front of it, 10 feet tall. Now, the people there were called upon to move their quarters because there was going to be a freeway coming through. Now, it had been in this location for centuries, and so they wrestled with what to do, and they found a new location, but they had to move this wonderful Buddha, the clay Buddha that was out in front. And so they gathered a big crane and and a number of their people, and they started to lift it. But when they did, it started to crumble. And the chief priest said, put it down, don't do that. And so he had them try to figure out what they were gonna do, and, and then it started to rain. And so he had tarps brought and put over them before they would move it the next day. Well, it turned out in the middle of the night, he got a flashlight and went under the tarp and started to look through this clay Buddha. And he saw through a crack, a shining golden light. And the next day he had all his people remove the clay and it revealed a beautiful 10 foot golden Buddha. And it seems what had happened was that centuries before when this golden Buddha was sitting there, there was an invasion of some foreign forces. And so they decided to cover it up with clay, knowing that it would not be stolen. Whereas if it were the golden Buddha revealed, they would take it away to their own land. And so this had existed for centuries this way, but it revealed itself finally in its, all its beauty. And the analogy is for each one of us, we walk around in this world with a clay surface present, a rough surface for us, but underneath there is this golden, precious perfection that is shining. If God lives in you, is there any way that you can be inherently sinful, inherently evil? No. Evil is the human attempt to divert divine, divine intent. So why do people do bad things? In unity we teach because they are out of alignment with God's will. We teach that Hell and heaven are not physical places that we go to. This is what so many people believe, that after we die, we go to either heaven or hell. No, we all go to the divine realm. Hell and heaven are merely states of, of consciousness. If we're in alignment with God consciousness, we are living in a state of heaven. If we are out of alignment, we are living in a state of hell. That's all it is. So it moves us to the third core belief of unity, which is we co-create our experiences by what we choose to think and what we feel and believe. 
But what does this mean? It means that what we think about all day long becomes our experience. We control our thoughts. So it is up to us how we are going to live. But while this is true, it flies in the face of traditional teachings that's based on a God out there somewhere that is not only looking down on us, but also controls us. In unity, we teach that there is not only one presence, one power, but one mind, capital M, mind, universal mind. And we are all points on that one mind. So our mind, small m mind, is a point on that universal mind. And we always have the option to connect with that universal mind or to go it on our own. If we go it on our own, beware because the mental molds the material. Let me give you an example of that. When Lenore and I were moving to Kansas City, Missouri for ministerial school more than a quarter century ago, we were on our way and we had an experience that has always been in my thoughts. And that is we were traveling down I-75 and we got into Southern Ohio. Lenore had been asleep for a couple of hours and I was getting hungry. So I looked over and here was a Cracker Barrel. Now, I've always liked the Cracker Barrel. Lenore, not so much so. So I pulled over, I woke Lenore and I said, Lenore, I'm getting a little hungry. Here's a Cracker Barrel. How about we go in and grab a bite? And Lenore said, Oh, that place. Well, that got to me. And I said, well, do you want to go somewhere else? She said, no, this is all right. So she got out of the, out of the car and started in. But that was enough to get me going. So I was fuming inside. And we went in, sat down, ate our meal. I can't remember what I had because I didn't eat very much. I was incensed inside myself. I was giving off this vibration. I hardly talked to Lenore. And at the end, we got the check and I went up to the counter, still feeling very much down. And I gave the woman my Visa credit card and she put it through and she said, I'm sorry, it's rejected. Now, I had never had a credit card rejected in my life. And I said to her, well, here, let me try another one. I gave her my MasterCard. And she tried it and she said, I'm sorry, it won't accept this either. So all of a sudden I got it. I was creating the situation with my mental vibration that was causing the difficulty. So I said, here, let me pay you cash. And we went on about our way. But before we did, I said, going out the door, Lenore, you won't believe what just happened. I've got to get this off of me right now. Otherwise, we're at risk because we'll be attracting more difficulty because that's the way it works. If you let yourself be down in a negative place, you are going to attract that which is negative to you. When we grasp the truth, that we are responsible for our own lives, we understand that as we give love, as we give compassion, as we give life energy, this will be returned unto us. This is the law of attraction that Jesus taught, the law of mind action. Thoughts held in mind produce in the outer after their kind. Remember Jesus said, give and it's given unto you Think about it. We want a healthy body, but we're not going to get it by thinking about how sick we are. The universe doesn't know that we want health if we're thinking sick. We want financial security, but we're experiencing lack and thinking about lack all day long. What is it will attract? We want friends, but we're feeling so lonely. So rather than doing something about it, reaching out to others, 
we just think about how lonely we are. The vibration we give out, the life energy is what will be our life experience. The fourth core belief of unity. Prayer and meditation heighten our connection with God mind. You see, giving out this energy is not easy all the time. And that's why we need this fourth core belief. Prayer and meditation are the connecting link with our mind and the mind of God. These are tools that bring us into connection with God. And we teach that there are three aspects of God, of mind, that there is the conscious mind that is aware of the world around us at any given point in time. There is the subconscious that is remembering all the thoughts and feelings we've ever had and bring them forth when we're in a similar situation. And then there is the divine mind that God has planted within us. And this is what in Luke 17, we're told the kingdom of God is within you. That's that divine mind. God thereby brings forth healing and harmony within our very being. And then there is the fifth core belief of unity. Through thoughts, words, and actions, we live the truth we know. We cannot just use our mind in a passive state. We must, like Jesus, go into action as Jesus did. He went out. He didn't just pray in the hills. He went out with the people. He taught. He healed. He created miracles. And Jesus said, if you believe these things, it is well that you do them. And otherwise we can't, in other words, we can't just sit back and pray and meditate and expect things to happen in our life. Our dear friend, Jack Boland used to say, you can sit and meditate until your hair grows out the door, but unless you get up and do things, nothing will change. There is an amazing thing that happens as you follow the teachings, these core beliefs, and put them into practice in your life. Over time, you will discover that you are born anew. And you'll also discover that your overriding feeling has become one of rejoicing rejoicing for the gifts of life that are abounding around you and within you. Because as you do so, you will continue to find reasons to feel joy. God bless you. Get ready, my soul I'm diving in Get ready, my soul I'm diving in To the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready My soul Everything I've ever done Everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To the present moment here 
to a new beginning here And I'm seeing life so clearly now Get ready, my soul I'm diving in Get ready My soul I'm diving in To the deepest kind of love To the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready, my soul Cause here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before Get ready, my soul I'm diving in Get ready, my soul I'm diving in To the deepest kind To the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready My soul Get ready Get ready My soul We are great, grateful to Daniel Namud for his beautiful music and for sharing it with us. And we are delighted that you have shared this experience with us today. We hope it has provided you a measure of insight and helped you further along your spiritual path. And we invite you to bless this service and your spiritual way by joining us in this prayer of sharing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we are so grateful for your spiritual support of the church and your personal support as well in so many ways. And one of those ways is through your financial support. And if you're able to provide some a financial blessing, there are three ways to give to the church. One is through online giving at www.slctroy.com slash forward slash give. Uh, a second is through mailing a check or money order to Spiritual Life Center, 41340 Fox Run Road, number 106, Novi, Michigan, 48377. And the third is to call my cell, 248-925-6214 with one-time credit card information for a one-time charge. Um, we are so grateful for your support in all kinds of ways. And 
we would also like to welcome anyone joining us for one of your first times and invite, invite you to join our email list by visiting our website, which is www.slctroy.com. And up in the upper right corner, you'll see join email list. And if you just enter your name and email address, you will receive information about all the activities of the church on a regular basis. And this will allow us to keep you informed of what's happening here at Spiritual Life Center. Also, we welcome your prayer requests. We have a powerful prayer team that is helping to support all the people of the church and their friends. And if you have any prayer requests, you can send us to us, those to us at ronaldfscott at gmail.com. And we will send your prayer request. We just send the first name and the first initial of the last name to our prayer team, as well as to Silent Unity. If you get those to us by the end of today and Sunday night, we send these out for the week. But we also then send special requests that come up during the week. So don't hesitate to to call or email to us. You can also send these to my cell at 248-925-6214. In addition, Silent Unity is available to pray with you 24-7, uh, where a counselor, a, a uh, prayer chaplain will be available for individual prayer with you. And the number for that is 1-800-NOW-PRAY. We also want to uh, let you know that coming up a week from Wednesday on April 21st, Reverend Eileen will be providing a guided meditation on that Wednesday at 7 p.m. And also be aware that next month, during the month of May, on a Wednesday night, our wonderful music team will be providing a joint musical experience and they'll all be together for this for the first time in a year. And, you know, this will be an opportunity for us all to support our music team, which has had such a difficult time during this past year. Finally, we would like to invite you to our Zoom coffee hour at 11 p.m., 11 a.m., or immediately following the service. You should have received an email with a new link for this time of connection. If not, please contact us and we'll get that information to you. And now, please join us in our peace song and benediction. As you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. 
The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Amen. Go your way rejoicing. All is truly well.